Hello there. This is the family doctor. You know, Doc, I bet you've been in my drugstore a hundred thousand times. Oh, yes, sure. And I ain't never seen you eat a chocolate sundae before. Well, that can always be a first time, Pete. Yes, that's right, I reckon. But I always says is how it ain't so much what a man does as what he thinks that counts in the long run. For as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. Is that it? Huh? Oh, yeah, yeah, sure thing, Doc, that's it. Now, you take Lawyer Bates upstairs, for instance. What about him? Here. There you are, Doc. Your chocolate sundae. I, I put some nuts on it, too. Oh, fine. Yeah. Well, Lawyer Bates, now, he goes around town most of the time with a grouch on. Leastwise, he tries to make folks think that way. Hmm. He growls around town, yelling all the time that he's going out to foreclose a mortgage or call a loan or something. But he don't never seem to do it. <laughs> no, Ralph Bates is all right. Why, sure he is. He just seems to get a wallop out of making the folks of Cedarton think he's so tough. But deep down in his heart, he don't think so at all. Of course not. So it ain't what a man does, it's the way he thinks that counts. You're absolutely right, Pete. Say, Doc, what's the matter with you this morning? Why? What do you mean, what's the matter with me? Well, I can generally get an argument out of you. But this morning, you're just too dang agreeable. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, I guess you're right again, Pete. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you. Mrs. Adams has been hankering after that new radio set that Jess Rankins had in his window, and last night I decided she ought to have it. So I took it home in the car and hooked it up before supper, and you should have seen how surprised and pleased she was. Gosh, to Friday, you'd have thought it was Christmas morning. <laughs> well, that's a Jim Dandy, Doc. <laughs> Mrs. Adams is a fine woman. She deserves the best. I should say she does. And that reminds me. Jess should ought to be coming around here pretty soon to fix my radio. Uh -huh. Something wrong? Yes, there sure is. I told Chick to stop in at Rankin's on his way back from the Blisses and bring Jess with him. <laughs> What's a drugstore without a radio, eh, Pete? Sure thing you know, Doc. Oh, here they come now. Hello, Jess. You'll just about have time. What seems to be the trouble, Pete? Oh, howdy, Doc Adam. Oh, hello, Jess. Morning, Chick. Morning, Doctor. Well, I'll tell you, Jess. When I want to listen to the fights, I get a bunch of Italians singing some fern language. And when I want to hear the master of crime... I get some high-voiced dame a spouting receipts for cooking artichokes. <laughs> yeah, that's the way. <laughs> well, it ain't no laughing matter. I want to hear them races that's going on pretty soon. Uh, here's that racing form you asked me to get, Mr. May. Yeah, oh, yes, thanks. Well, Chick, how are you a that? <coughs> well, I... <coughs> Golly, what's the trouble, Doc? <coughs> Swallow a nut? <coughs> no, no. No, I'm all right. Give me a glass of water. Yeah, sure thing. <coughs> Yeah, there you are. Well, Jess, there's the radio over on that hot water bag cabinet. See what you can do to fix her up quick, will you? Sure. Give Mr. Rankin a hand if he needs a check. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah sure. Pete May. Yeah, huh? 
Why, what's the trouble? Getting a young boy like Chick Harper to betting on horse race. Oh, now, Doc, that ain't nothing. We wasn't going to bet much. Just about four bits or something. Four bits. Yeah, it's four bits today, and next year it'll be $50, and the next thing we know, he'll be into that sort of thing up to his neck, betting maybe a $100. Oh, no. Now, listen, Doc. No, you listen to me, Pete. Now, wait a sec, Doc. Didn't we decide a couple of minutes ago that it wasn't what a man did that mattered? It's just the way he thinks? Oh, well, this is different. No, it isn't either. That's the same thing. If Chick wins, he'll start thinking this is easy money. An easy way to pick up a little extra spending money. If he loses, well, he'll start thinking he's got to make it up. It'll just go from bad to worse. Oh, Doc, golly. Now, you mark my words, Pete May. If you let that boy bet even 50 cents, you'll be starting him on a path that you can't bring him back from. Following the horses is a mighty bad start for a boy. Oh, gee, I don't there see... There he is, Pete, as good as new. Well, almost. Well, that's dandy, Jess. How much do I owe you? Oh, we'll call it square if you give me a soda and let me sit here and listen to the races. Well, sure thing you know. How are you betting, Jeff? Well, I don't know. Let me see that racing form, Chief. Sure, Mr. Rankin. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Run around. Good horse. Hey, Doc, where are you going? I'm going home. Turn on my new radio and listen to some Italians singing a foreign language. <laughs> Poor Doc. He thinks we're sending Chick to the dogs just to listening to a horse race. going to take run around, are you, Jess? Yep, I think I will. All right, then. I'll take soap bubble. And I'll take on the cuff. Yes. Well, shall we uh, make it odds or just even? Well, let's just make it even. Uh, That'll okay be with, easier. It's okay with me. Hey, listen, it sounds like they're ready to start. Now, ladies and gentlemen, through the courtesy of full bin horse food, we bring the broadcast the final race at the Asmont Park racetrack with uh, Bert Nyman at the microphone. Come in, Bert. Thank you, Jeff. Well, folks, there's a great crowd out here today, and they're all as excited as your announcer is, too. <laughs> well, here are the names of the next, the eighth and final race. It's a great C handicap for four-year-olds and up. And here are the horses. On the inside, run around with DeWitt up. Number two, jumping jack with Michelson up. Number three, on the cuff with Jarvis riding. Number four, buzzer with Town up. Number five, soap bubble, McClellan riding. And number six, Nevermore with Rainier. Oh, Mike Rainier. Yeah. Oh, folks, and they're just about to come out of the paddock. Yep, here they come. Hey, hey what hey, the... It can't be oh, the radio. Oh, gee. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry, folks. I accidentally put my hand on the wrong button and took us off the app for a second. <laughs> Try not to do it again. Uh-oh. I guess I was mistaken, folks. They're not coming out yet. I see the band is going to play another number, so while we're waiting, I'll switch you to the microphone in front of the bandstand. <laughs> Say, I used to play a piccolo. Hmm, that's an idea. Why don't we get up a band here and see it? Yeah, piccolo takes the lead. Well, folks, here they come. I don't know whether you can hear the crowd or not, because we're up pretty high on top of the grandstand in a little glass of those boots. Train is leading the horse to the post. Getting lined up now. Yep, in the order we gave you. Soap Bubble is the favorite here today in this event. <laughs> Clellan's been doing all right, and he knows this horse. In the Armstead of Stables, by the way. Whoops, Jumping Jack's living up to his name. He's acting up at the barrier. Getting him calmed down now. And they're just about to... They're off. Huh? Oh, oh, oh. Yeah. Rise, Nevermore takes the lead on the outside. Noses out past Buzzer and Soap Bubble. But Soap Bubble's coming up fast. Uh -oh. 
now. <laughs> On the clock. Way behind the rest of them. Jumping Jack is very erratic today. Jockey Michelson can't do a thing with him. Soap bubble pulling up at the turn. Soap bubble passes buzzer. Whee! And he's just about nose and nose with Nevermore. Run around is dropping back now. Yeah. Run around is six. Ah, oh, sure. At the half, soap bubbles first. <laughs> Nevermore second. Buzzer third. Uh-oh, what's this? On the cuff is pulling up. Mm, I thought passes Jumping was... Jack. Oh. He's coming up faster and faster. Oh. Now on the cup passes Buzzer. Oh, He's pulling oh, up close to Nevermore. Yeah. Just about a half a length behind Nevermore. Here they come in the stretch. Oh, oh, Jarvis is forcing on the cup. Yeah. Something so terrific. Ball, close. Around, He's neck and neck now with Soap Bubble. Oh. He may pass him. It looks as though he may. Oh, come They're on. coming down. Hey. Hey, 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 Jess, for gosh sake, do something to that radio. It isn't a radio, I tell you. Oh, gee, my horse was coming in. I know he was. <laughs> Well, Doc Adams, <laughs> when did you come in here? I didn't hear you open the door. So, here are the three great gamblers, eh? I told you no good to cover this, Pete. <laughs> oh, quit it, Doc. Don't rub it in. Sorry, Listen, ladies and gentlemen, but there seems to be some mechanical difficulty at the track prohibiting us from bringing to you the finish of the last race today. Mechanical difficulties. And, uh, furthermore, because of previous commercial commitments, we shall be unable to return to the track now anyway. And so... Through the courtesy of Kloppenstein's flower shop. Ah, uh, Chick, turn that thing, thing off. With Jet Masters and his music. With a three... <laughs> oh, Doc, for gosh <laughs> sakes. Can't you lay off this now? Well, Pete, it just goes to show. When you start leading a young boy astray like you and Jess Rankin have been leading Chick here... Huh? Who, me? Yes, you, Chick Harper. I mean you and nobody else. Why the idea of such a thing? These two supposedly upstanding, upright citizens of Cedarton betting on horse races with a clean-cut young lad like you. Why, it's, it's, it's preposterous, that's what it is. If you'd never run into these two, you'd probably never have known there was such a thing as a horse race. Why, well, Dr. Adams, what are you talking about? I used to be a jockey. Nevertheless, I... Uh, you... You what? Yeah, I was a jockey for three years. I rode the nags all over the country. From to last spring when I broke my leg. But, well, well, well uh, I never heard of such a thing. Gosh, to Friday, what is the world coming to? This is the family doctor. I'll be in to see you again right soon. Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs>